Today I'm going to show you guys how to make an interior scene that you're happy with. So starting out with lighting, like all good scenes, even an interior needs an HDRI. Now in my scene right here, you'll see that my HDRI is simply shining through the windows. However, I would recommend if you can get away with it, using your HDRI and lighting from the ceiling. If you have an HDRI, you want to set it up like you normally would with any sort of lighting setup. I've decided this. If you don't have a ceiling, set the HDRI strength to something small like 0.1. And when you do that, you get a lot of really nice lighting that sort of just fills the room. Now, what the HDRI does is because it's lighting from all different directions with all different kind of colors and slight variations, you get a ton of really nice reflections that you don't get from just an area light. Now, obviously, this is only going to work if the ceiling or anything below is invisible, except actually it can work because if we go to the object properties and we select our ceiling, scroll down until we get to visibility, then we can click on shadow. And essentially what this is going to do is it's going to allow light to pass through this thing. We can also remove our diffuse, our glossy, and our transmission or anything else that might be picking up light. Now, this looks a little bit weird, so I don't highly recommend it, but there's potential cases where you could get away with it. So, if you think that you can get away with it, I think you should. Otherwise, I have a few area lights. This one is just going to basically sit up at the top of the room, and it is filling the entire room with a very, very light light. So, if I set this to zero, and I just add an area light in, scale it to fit the entire size of the room basically, and then turn up the power. Then you'll see we start to get rid of some of these shadows, and I'm not trying to get rid of them entirely. I still want some shadows, I still want some contrast, but if I just do this a little bit, I get rid of most of the shadows, and the light looks like it has a little bit of bouncing. I've kept it at a warm color for the most part, but it doesn't necessarily need to be a super warm color. I prefer warmer because it looks more like sunlight to me. And one thing to take note of is the fact that, as you can see, this area light doesn't cover the whole room. It stops right about where my, my chandelier hook is. The reason for this is because I have this cabinet in the foreground. I want my cabinet to be more of a silhouette, more blocking and uh, guiding the eyes of the composition towards the middle than anything else. It's not meant to be a focus point. You'll see that if I add in another light, it'll bring a little bit of attention over here, maybe too much. So what I might want to do is lower that light just so the cabinet is still visible, but only barely. Essentially, you're just trying to balance your light so that you know the things that you want to be in focus are bright and the things that you don't want to be in focus are darker. One other way to make this very nice and dramatic is adding in a sun lamp and having that shine brightly through the window. You'll see if I add in a sun lamp, it's not shining very well through the windows, right? It's scattering a ton. And the reason for this is just because that's what glass is going to do in Blender. It's going to scatter the light. Uh, we don't really want this. Uh, the reason being, it's not going to look as good. So um, a little trick that we can do to improve our interiors is we can go into our glass materials. We can make glass look a lot better if we add a transparent texture in and then we mix the two shaders. Now, as you can see already, just from doing that, you're getting a lot of extra light leak coming in, which looks really nice. But you'll see that the glass is starting to get transparent, right? If I drop this value too much, you'll see the glass completely disappears. And we don't want that. I want to keep my same rough glass look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a light path node. And if I use is camera ray and plug it into the top value, our glass is still visible, but all of that light is now being let into the room and it's illuminating everything in a very nice, bright way. So, if we compare the difference between the two, here is the lighting here. It's nice, it's okay, but you lose a bunch of these really, really nice, bright highlights on things. Whereas here, we get bright highlights right here. We get some bright highlights over here. I can rotate the sun and change the vibe of this thing entirely, and you have these super, super, super bright bits. Now, one thing I always like to do with any sort of scene is I love using color management down here. It's down at the bottom of the render tab. It doesn't change your render or your lighting. It changes the image after the fact. So if I were to render the scene and then change this, the image that's rendered is going to change. It's not like it's baked in. It's not something that only applies to the scene pre-rendering. It applies even after. But one thing I always like to do is boost the exposure. This is my base exposure. And if I just boost it up to 1.9, which is what we had at that, uh, you get a little bit more light. It looks a lot nicer. 
Now, something else you can do is if you want your lights to be a little bit more intense, you can drop your gamma, and that's going to add a lot of contrast. And then you up the exposure a little more, and you get a ton more contrast between your lights. It's a very nice, really simple trick that can make renders look a ton better. And another thing you can do really quickly in this is you can change your contrast. So you can go to a medium-high contrast or a low contrast if you want. Um, I would recommend not doing a low contrast, but... If you want to go black and white, you can do that as well. You'll notice now this thing stands out a lot, and it didn't stand out before. And the reason for that is because I had a fancy little thing over here called a light blocker. Um, it's just a plane. You set it to black. You can up the roughness. You can keep the roughness low, whatever you want. But essentially, it's just a black plane that's used to block light. The reason I have this is because I've got other shots from this angle. With that, I needed, you know, windows and stuff because I need to build out the environment. But it makes it look very odd when this thing is super bright and just kind of draws your eyes over to there. So you can throw light blockers in to block light bounces through windows. Uh, you can do it as gobos as well. So if I were to just put a noise texture into the alpha, I've got a gobo you'll basically see that we get uh, this little shape and it'll kind of scatter the light across everything. In this case, I don't want a gobo. I just want a light blocker. So I'm going to leave it plain as is. And it's just going to make everything look a lot nicer. One thing you may not be aware of in Cycles uh, and in Eevee, you can view compositing within Eevee and Cycles. All you have to do in order to see this stuff is go to the shading tab. And if you click camera under compositor, you'll be able to see uh, different compositing effects in the viewport. Now, if we jump into the compositor, I've been testing out a few of the new Blender nodes. One nice one is Vignette, which can add a little bit of contrast, help focus your image. Uh, I find it works very nice in interiors and exteriors. But um, the real one I'm here for is this guy, the Glare. Uh, the Glare node is one of my favorite nodes. It adds bloom and kind of a halation to anything. You'll see once I add this in that it's gonna change it's not really gonna change the whole look but it is going to significantly improve this image so i'm gonna add a new glare node by pressing shift a and searching glare and i can just drop it onto my compositor chain we don't see anything right now if we turn the threshold down you'll see we get a ton of glare now this doesn't look that great obviously it's a bit overboard um but it is adding a lot of focus to these brighter areas now, what I like to use is not streaks. I like to use bloom. The bloom node is uh, basically just going to add a nice uh, rounded glow around your lights. So if I set this to 0 0.1, you'll see it adds a nice glow around these lights. Now, one thing you can do is you can change the size so that it doesn't spread out as far. I like a bigger size in truth, and I like a very low threshold. That way stuff uh, tends to glow a bit. Now, if I turn the threshold all the way down, the whole room glows, and I don't want that. I just want the bright bits to glow. And when they do, then I can, you know, adjust the size so there's a nice little bit of halation that spreads out and over these other objects. You can see without any of that bloom, and if we add it back in, it just adds a ton to the render itself. And if you keep it really subtle, it's nice. It doesn't you know, take over the entire render. So another really nice way to make an interior render look good or, you know, to make even an exterior render look good is to use um, sunbeams, create god rays. Now, normally I would do this with shaders uh, basically by adding a plane and making it an emission shader and a transparent shader and kind of just aligning them in the room in a way that looks nice like this. So they're coming in and it looks like sun rays, but... Blender 5.0 apparently has a new node in the glare node. So if I duplicate my glare node, I can click on bloom, change the type to sunbeams. And as you can see, we get these crazy looking sunbeams. So what I can do now is I guess I'll just turn up some of the smoothing, make it a little bit nicer looking. And I can turn my threshold up a little bit. And then um, I can change the sun position so that it's coming from a different direction and I'll just match that sun position with the current sun position I've got. As you can see, it's very nice and it adds uh, these very nice god rays. Now, I'm gonna up the size so that they spread all throughout the room. If I play with the jitter, I get kind of a more dusty look, which is nice. Uh, I'm gonna keep it low though. As you can see with that, we get super easy sunbeams. 
change the tint, but by default, they're kind of going to match your, your bloom colors. And I can, of course, change the strength. So I have a very light mix. Um, I'm going to keep it super light. And as you can see, that makes everything look super nice. So now that we have that, one last thing that I think makes interior renders look very, very nice is dust. If I zoom in over here by the window, and I just let it load for a second, you'll see right in this area over here, these little tiny specks of dust. Now, I have done this using a particle system. I'll show you how to make the particle system really quickly. It's not difficult, but it is um, a little bit of a slog in terms of rendering speed. So, uh, you may want to opt for a different method than this. So, in order to make dust, all you have to do is add in a plane, scale it up, move it upward, and then add in a new particle system. Now we're going to choose object, apply scale to make sure that everything works properly. Next, we are going to add in an icosphere. We're going to move that out to the side. I'm going to scale it down, and I'm also going to apply the scale of this object. One thing I'm going to do is I'm going to press E and extrude it downward until I have a square. Essentially, this is going to be the size of your room, so you just want this to fit inside of your interior space. I'm going to set the end frame at something like 10. I'm going to set the lifetime to something like 1,000 or 10,000. I just don't want the dust to die out, so make this the length of your animation. Next, I'm going to make it so under the viewport display we do not see the emitter. That way we can see through it and see all of our dust particles. Under force field settings, or sorry, field weights, I want to turn off the gravity. I'm going to turn off normal velocity under the velocity tab. Uh, that way it, nothing moves inward towards the middle, as you can see. And then a very, very important piece is I am going to press Shift A, add in a new force field, and that's going to be turbulence. Turbulence go wherever. Um, and I'm going to turn up the strength, turn up the flow a little bit, and turn up the size. And as you'll see, dust goes crazy. Tune the strength so it's a little bit lower, just a very low, nice, easy amount. I don't want this stuff going too far away. Um, and another thing I can kind of do is maybe uh, add in a magnetic uh, force field as well. And that'll keep everything sort of close. As you can see, it's insanely strong. So I may want to turn that down to a smaller value. Um, and that'll just keep everything kind of close. Obviously, you don't necessarily need to do this. It doesn't really matter. Now, uh, an important part of making this stuff look dusty is you're going to want to go into the render settings. You're going to need to choose your object, and the object is, of course, going to be our icosphere. And as you can see, we have a very tiny, tiny icosphere. Now, if we set this to point 0.1, a little bit more visible, very nice. I'm going to turn up this scale randomness quite a lot. The next thing I'm going to do, which is very important, and it's going to make this a lot thicker and a lot more realistic, is we're going to open up this children tab, and we're going to click simple. I like to set this to something like 30. It has a lot of dust particles, but they are all kind of clumped together next to their objects. Uh, obviously, this doesn't look real at all. So what we need to do in order to make this look a little bit more realistic is we need to increase the radius. As you can see, if we increase the radius enough, it spreads all out, and then we need to change the roundness, which is going to spread it out horizontally. And now, if we play it, you'll see we get a thousand little dust particles just flying around throughout the room. Now, the last thing I think is really important. You're going to go to Physics, and under Integration, you're going to go to the time step and change it to something like 0 0.2, 0 0.02, or 0 0.01. And that is going to drop the speed of this dust by a ton, um, which makes it look a lot more dust-like. It's just floating through the air. What I'd recommend doing is simply giving the um, dust particle that you've made, this icosphere, a shader. You'll see we have a transparent or a translucent shader. I'm also going to mix this with a transparent shader. And if I turn it up quite a lot, you'll see it becomes just barely visible. I would recommend giving it uh, somewhat of a yellowish color. It doesn't have to be saturated like crazy. If we had a light, it get really lit up. That's just something to be a little bit wary of. If I were to change this to an area light, it'll make it stand out a little bit more within um, kind of like a, like a window or anywhere there's a bright light coming through. So I highly recommend you start doing these in your interior renders if you want to see a very big quality increase without too much of an extra effort into modeling or making materials or anything. Focusing on very nice, clean, 
and strong lighting is going to help take your renders that extra 10% of the way to making a render that you're extremely happy with. So if you've enjoyed the tutorial and you want to see more, go over to my Patreon. Uh, I make a ton of other tutorials and uh, some scene breakdowns to other types of content. Also, don't forget to follow me on Instagram. I post a lot of short tutorials over there. And don't forget to subscribe here on YouTube. Bye. I'll see you guys later.